Hey YouTube, <clears throat> Hillbilly uh, F100 here. I uh, want to clue you all into another uh, hobby I've got, um, and that's uh, uh, herpetology. Basically, I'm a little bit <clears throat> different than a lot of other hillbillies and rednecks in the way that I actually like um, snakes. Um, there's a lot of them, a lot of people you'll see out there that just, you know, and I used to be the same way. Used to couldn't stand the um, the side of a snake or nothing. I started educating myself a little bit, doing a little bit of research, and realized that they ain't um, all that bad. Um, after a little while of doing that, I went ahead and got myself a pet snake. Um, that's what you're looking at now. It's pet corn snake. His name's Ollie. He's a teenager, as snakes go, so he's not full grown or nothing, but he's about medium sized. He's still enough to where if you were to see him in the wild, he would scare the crap out of you and you would probably try to kill him. But um, it's his feeding time, so I'm going to go ahead and feed him. He does eat an adult mouse. Um, I do feed him live. Um, and there you go. He's got him in the mouth, and he's wrapped up around him. He'll wait for his heartbeat to stop moving, to start to stop beating, and then he'll start eating him. It's a little bit graphic, um, but it's actually not as bad as uh, the venomous. The venomous ones will strike and then let go. Um, they'll just do a quick strike, similar to as if they were striking a human. And then they'll let the uh, rat um, or mouse or whatever it is um, die on its own, kicking and screaming and everything. This one's a little bit more, in my opinion, actually a little bit more in, uh, humane. And the simple fact that he actually, um, he bites, holds on, squeezes him, squeezes him. Um, it's a lot faster than a venomous. And now what he's doing right now is he's actually searching out for the head. Now the head is closer to the uh, camera and he's about to get it. He's almost under his body. I try to be real careful not to get too close to him. Uh, not because of the threat of a bite or anything like that, but um, I don't want to scare the snake. Um, that's why I didn't, as soon as I dropped him in there, I didn't eat, I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't um, make any sounds. I let him, and he, you know, and he smelt him, but he couldn't, I had the fan on, I forgot to turn the ceiling fan off. So that's the reason why he was a little slower on getting to him. Um, there is a little bitty, there are some drawbacks with feeding a snake a uh, live prey. Um, <clears throat> one of the major drawbacks is that the, they have a tendency to, to fight back, naturally, um, which this, this mouse did um, just a little bit. Uh, they do so in the way of they use their teeth and they try to grab on, but their teeth really just isn't enough to grab through and I guess it can puncture the thick scales. Um, luckily, I've not had that happen with Ollie. Um, but you just have to be kind of aware of it, um, especially if you do have to, you know, if you do feed live. Um, 
this is my second snake that I've had. My first snake I fed frozen and I uh, warmed up the uh, his food and then fed it to him, fed it to them that way because that's what it was used to. Ollie, this snake, um, when I got him, they, I got him, um, I don't know how many months ago I've had him. I have had him under six months. So he was already accustomed to eating live and they say that there's times where um, once they get used to eating live, they, they that's what they'll crave and that's what they want and they won't go to the other, which is the frozen, already dead. I guess they can tell the difference, I don't know. But um, regardless, you know, I found that there's not a whole lot of, there's not a whole lot of uh, difference between live and dead. Um, he seems to do just fine with live. Um, it, I'll probably in the post, um, well, I take that back. I've been uploading, I'm, I'm taking this straight, straight from my phone and I've been uploading straight from, um, my phone. I, you know, I put it on the computer and then I do straight to the computer. I don't go through any editing program. Um, for, for whatever reason, when I go through my editing program, um, the videos won't show up as HD and, um, they just, to me, they don't show up as good. Um, and it's a lot quicker, but I don't get to do any kind of cool effects like titles uh, and things like that. But what the reason I was saying all that is because typically I'd probably speed through this process of him munching down on this little guy. Um, but you know, it's not taking too terribly long. Um, and you could always fast forward a little bit and I'll try to remember to put a little note um, on the actual video that says, you know, if you don't wish to see him actually eating him, fast forward to the end or whatever. Most people that look at these videos, unfortunately, they're they're wanting to see the strike, and you know that's it's just like when you watch NASCAR race. Eighty percent of the people watch NASCAR because they want to see a wreck, you know. So it's kind of the same mentality. Um, I was actually, believe it or not, a little more fascinated with the the eating portion of it and how he devours it. Um, I've never, you know, I grew up on a farm, um, or not necessarily on a farm, I grew up with land and, uh, you know, my dad always taught me or told me, you know, kill him just because, you know, the old saying that any, any, uh, the only good snake is a dead snake. But, um, you know, I've, come to have a little leniency on them. If it's venomous, I will still kill it because I have no, to me, that they, they pose too much of a threat to my kids, my family, other people's kids, other people's families. But these non-venomous snakes, you know, they, they do have a purpose in the um, whole, you know, um, predator-prey system. You know, they're food for somebody else and they keep rat and mouse, mice population down. So I figured, you know, why not go ahead and try to learn as much as I can about them. And the biggest, I think the biggest thing that most people, they'll just outright kill a snake is because quite honestly, if, if any of y'all were to see this snake out here in the wild, you would probably, just like I used to think, that it was a venomous snake. I would honestly probably think um, initial reaction would be either rattlesnake or copperhead. And that's just as a quick look. Um, just because I didn't know anything about snakes other than the fact of, you know, I knew for sure the copperheads look, um, which this, you know, can have similar markings at a glance. Um, definitely not the same coloristics, uh, but that's why I said rattlesnake afterwards. Because, yeah, it doesn't have the rattle and all that, but it does have similar kind of markings. Um, I don't know if y'all heard that. That was my phone beeping. I'm sorry if you did. But um, anyhow... So, you know, that's kind of it. That's, that's Ollie for you. Um, I don't know if I can That's Mr. Ollie. Sucking down the tail, just like a thing of spaghetti. So, um, snakes, 
I'm real cautious. This is the only uh, we used to video. I've got other videos. If you guys are interested, I could post other videos um, of snake of the snake eating. But um, I'm real cautious on what I do around them because snakes know that they're the, they're most vulnerable when they're eating. So they're a little bit more on edge. Uh, I'm not saying he would strike at me. I put my finger right down at his mouth, and he wouldn't do nothing because I don't touch the mouse, don't smell like the mouse, but um, they're just a little more on edge. It's, you know, you want to try to keep a bull, um, just like any other pet. You know, you don't want to sit there and scare a dog as it's trying to eat because eventually it will start turning on you. Um, but anyways, hope you enjoy the video. He's done eating, so I'm going to let him roam about for a few minutes just to ensure that he's um, digesting well enough. As you can see, um, right back there is where the mouth is now. So it's from the front head section all the way to right there. So, and, you know, he's flickering his tongue because there's, this is the only place we feed him. Um, his cage is, we feed him in a different location than his cage. This is just a big old Tupperware uh, container. And you can see there's other remnants of mice, meaning their poop. So he smells that. He knows that this is the next, when he gets put in here, he, he perks up because he knows it's feeding time. Uh, we feed him once a week, so he's definitely spoiled. They don't need to be fed once a week, but it definitely doesn't hurt them. So hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, um, if you feel free to leave a comment, subscribe. Um, I'm going to be posting a video of um, uh, my engine um, out of the old green truck. Um, that's out back, the one that I'm going to do the rat rod project. Um, I think I've sold the engine out of it, so i got to get the engine ticket out of it. i um, got a chainsaw tonight I'm going to start uh, tearing into, see if I can get running. I bought it at the swap meet for 10 bucks. It's a Craftsman. I think it's like a 14-inch bar. Um, I'm going to be working on that one as well. So hopefully there's a couple more videos coming up in the next couple of days. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching.